So as we were deciding what we wanted to do for this new run of shows, obviously we couldn't go to the cinema, we couldn't, you know, there weren't as many games we wanted to cover, and games can be more difficult to cover anyway because they take longer to play. Um, I said to Nick, how about we just review streaming shows, and Nick responded, I'm not okay with this. <laughs> okay, what would you rather us do? And he went, no, I'm not okay with this. And I was like, what? And it turns out I'm not okay with this is a Netflix series. Uh, and it was, I think, to be fair, I think it was like the first thing you uh, suggested. But I thought yeah, I'd make the joke. It, yeah, no, it's very good. Um, um, so what, it released on Netflix, what was it, last month? So, a bit earlier, oh, no, I it was think back February. in February. Yeah, 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 been out a little God, while. God, months and days are becoming like interchangeable at the moment. <laughs> so anyway, this follows um, a character called Sydney Novak, played by Sophia Lillis, who, mm-hmm. if you saw the... She was in uh, the recent it fi- uh, it films that were made. As was at least that's where I know her from. Why Olaf as well as as uh, Stanley. Yes. No, I did. Yeah, I recognise those two from there. Um, and it is about a seventeen-year-old girl uh, who starts realising that she has superpowers. I think that's kind of the. I mean, it's the way Wikipedia sums it up, but it is a good way to sum it up. Hmm. Uh, the series kind of. Yeah, so well, are we going to do like we did with The Mandalorian, do non spoilers and some spoilers? Yeah, yeah, there's not a huge amount to spoil in this one, but yeah, there's. Um... Well, yeah, com- comparatively, like the episodes run between 19 and 28 minutes, mm. uh, which is good because it doesn't means that it doesn't really feel dragged out in places. Oh, they're an absolute breeze to get through, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, so as a result, like, it's, yeah, they're, well, we'll try and avoid sp- spoilers. For the most part, we're probably just gonna cover it because there's not m- not much show compared yeah. to Mandalorian. I've also just uh, seen on Wikipedia that this might be a, a part of a cinematic universe to go with um, the end of the fucking world, which is another from the same director, I think, that came out um, last year. I watched a bit of it. Oh, so there you go. Okay. <laughs> so that's a weird one. Yeah. Good director, very good director. He directed all uh, seven episodes of this one. Yeah, no, I was looking at that, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think, well, what should we talk about first? The 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 plot is kind of get this main character, Sid, who's been having trouble at school and is uh, due to a recent family tragedy, which mm. later gets revealed to be that her father had committed suicide. Mm. Uh, and she's been, she's made to write in a diary which becomes kind of almost like the narrative for the show because she's narrating what she's writing in her diary as kind of the show goes on. Yeah, it's a interesting kind of semi-unreliable narrator type thing, um, mm. which, because she's uh, been writing a, a, a diary due to her therapist suggesting to do so. Um, it's a very nice, short, little character piece, I thought, I thought this show. So I... There's a few, like, I do, like, let me start by saying, I like this show and I recommend this show. I think it's very good. And I think, Mm. um, teenage, teenage angst and frustration as, uh, portrayed by, as you know, kind of the visual metaphor of unwanted superpowers is very Mm. good. I think it's based off a comic book, but I, I wasn't able to find much information on the comic book when I was, like, looking up. Mm. I think somebody at Netflix mandates the kind of it has to look retro but it's actually modern yeah there's a word for I, that I, isn't there that I came up that uh, I was looking at for, for the last season and I've forgotten that word again <laughs> retro? no there's a kind of it. They, they. it's a very popular thing at the moment they use it I think since the success of Stranger Things they've used it for like this sex education um, the end of the fucking world there's a very it's um, uh, an, an ab- no what's it called an anthropomorph. Uh, what's the word? Not anthropomorphic. That means it's just like animals walking like people. I think. No, not that. <laughs> word for time. Uh, in specific. Anyway, there's a word for it. It's a very good word. It's got a basically. It's got an aesthetic that they use kind of seventies and eighties cars and there's not an over-reliance on sort of technology to tell the narrative and stuff, but it's still technically set in the modern day. 
Um, See, I I've not seen Stranger Things. Mm. I've seen Sex Education. I thought mm. Sex Education did it well. Mm. I didn't a hundred percent like how this show did it. Again, I don't I think thought this. I thought this like bear in mind. I've only ever seen like the trailer for Stranger Things and like stills, but this felt like it was just. We're gonna do it because Stranger Things did it. I mean, Stranger and Things think... is objectively set in the eighties, whereas I agree this didn't really do it for any narrative reason other than that's what the director was going for from an from an aesthetic point of view. It it felt more like a crutch, honestly, than an yeah. actual benefit to the show. That was one of my notes. Is like, whilst the show does look nice it didn't feel like this added anything to it at all uh, well I, I think there were some subtle sort of um, references and um, callbacks to some 80s films you've obviously got some imagery the show opens with a shot that's very um, that calls back to Carrie yeah now I noticed like those like 80s references throughout it and stuff like that yeah but Almost, I wish it would have just committed. Like for the, I'm pretty sure like the whole first episode, I thought it until one of them started using a phone. Yeah, I thought it was just set in the 80s. Yeah, and then I was like, oh, it's just, and then it just all seemed a bit disappointing. Like even you could have just not had the phones in there, really. Yeah, it's kind of um, it's yeah, it's kind of have your cake and eat it, isn't it? You want the aesthetic of the 80s, but then you want the the plot devices of having mobile phones and stuff. Yeah, like I say, it's more an, a nitpick. Cause like I say, I did enjoy the show, but it is on my list of like, it is in my notes as that was just a bit. It felt a bit forced. It felt mm. a bit other popular shows are doing it, so we should too. Yeah, no, I I, I agree with that from a certain compared extent, to Sex Education, which I think does it far better. Especially as this kind of it has it has some of the cast members that they've pulled from it as well, which is obviously like an eighties set kind of. Um, coming yes. of age drama in parts where it's not being a horror film but um, taking over uh, also why Olaf um, played uh, Star-Lord a young Star-Lord in the Guardians movies I've just realised oh yeah fun fact he's very good yeah he is uh, in fact both Sophia Lillis as well I think was excellent um, she's got a very very characterful face hasn't she she sort of tells a lot from the way she's staring or the way she's reacting to other characters um, like the jock character and stuff, the way she sort of interacts with that, you very, you very much believe her as that kind of dorky kind of kid in that year yeah, no I think the, the cast will do a really good job actually yeah so yeah, no, no complaints kind of that wise I think yeah, her performance is very good, his performance is very good, hmm. I think it's uh, a very good show for its the conversations that it has around kind of almost uh, puberty, frustration, sexuality, mm. stuff like that. Mm. Um, I think whilst it was a breeze to get through with shorter episodes, it did mean that some of the stuff was... Some of the, the twists weren't really that twisty, mm. and sometimes the show was a bit, sh- bit shallow, didn't really have as much going on as I'd have liked. Mm. Um, I think... Um, what I liked about it was it did a lot of that through the cinematography and through the production value. Hmm. Like if we were to talk, if we were to talk briefly about Good Omens, which we reviewed a couple of weeks ago, that that was quite long episodes where they would pad out a lot of the runtime with d- uh, character moments, and dialogue, etc. Whereas this kind of, it's definitely more of a visual appeal, which I think worked for me a little bit better. Yeah, I mean. Not that we have to compare every show that we review, yeah, but yeah. I, I, I think like someone like me who who enjoys visual storytelling, um, I think is going to enjoy this a lot. Yes, no, I do, I do um, understand that, and I do do agree. I do think that this would be in another in another imagining of the show. This would be the first free episode of like a ten episode series, mm. if they were like hour long episodes, and then. Mm. Because obviously it ends on a cliffhanger. Hmm. We were saying actually, you, you said about good omens and like CG and stuff like that. There were certain points where I thought the CG was very good. Other bits where I thought it was kind of bad. In this, so in, sure. I'm not yeah. okay with this. What bits did what bits stood out to you as being bad? Because I know a lot of the. So this is in the trailer, but there are some sort of supernatural superpower elements to this, and a lot of those moments are done quite practically so like there's a scene yeah. in, in the library of the books which I thought looked excellent 
Um, I'm mostly talking about the way that the last episode almost ends. But right, I'm not okay. sure there's any way of making that look not kind of cheesy and hmm. weird. I mean, we can go into kind of spoilers in a second just to talk about specific plot moments. But generally, uh, I thought this was good. Yeah, or, me too. I, I am okay with this. Hey, <laughs> I've <laughs> just seen the one of the executive producers, Sean Levi, is the um, producer of Stranger Things. Oh, that explains a lot. I think there's a lot of crossover here between the two. Um, yeah, I, 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 I totally, I can totally understand your criticisms. Um, and yeah, that's they're they're all absolutely. Um, I agree for the most part, but I'm um, I think this. I am okay with this, um, as you said, because again, they're they're short enough episodes that you can just absolutely breeze through them. Um, I think I'd probably watch a second season when it gets inevitably gets released. Absolutely. The yeah. one th- the one thing I would say that I'm not sure you would agree with is I think the show is at the m- it's most interesting when it's not explaining things mm. I actually found the bits where they sat down and explained stuff to be some of the more boring bits Yeah, and also takes a bit of the fascination away with like the powers mm. a little bit midichlorian-ish <laughs> like takes, takes the wonderment away and like the magic away when you just mm. explain it um, interesting you say was, about midichlorianness was... there like uh like your favourite film, The Phantom Menace, does. Not my favourite film. It's definitely, it's still, it's just better than Attack of the Clones. We're talking it's, about who gets not a wooden than spoon. Attack of the Clones. <laughs> talking about who gets a wooden spoon. <laughs> but would you agree with that, or did you think it was? Um, it was I don't think I was. Really to, I, again, I, it went. It blasted through so quickly for me that I, um, yeah, I didn't necessarily, um, didn't bother me particularly. Um, I would say I think a lot of these shows and stuff and you know what I was saying I, I've just started watching Community the other day I think there's a lot of um, shows do you think the sort of um, The Breakfast Club is getting overused as a point of reference for things these days probably yeah there's, it's just inevitable that there's an episode in every sort of modern series that calls back to being stuck in detention or stuck in somewhere with a, a group of other sort of misfit characters where they get to know each other better um, yeah and if you really are after a quarantine watch then I would definitely recommend going back to watch The Breakfast Club the, the original <laughs> film um, because pretty much every series that's commissioned now has some kind of callback to it and it's a brilliant film but yeah maybe maybe it's just getting to that past the point of um, using it for everything I don't know yeah, um, and I would recommend Community as a <laughs> quarantine watch. So this has become a very interesting episode. <laughs> no, but I did, I did like this. I would recommend this just for people to form their own opinions. And mm. also, it's it's not a big time commitment either. No, it's seven episodes, average of twenty minutes. It's kind of it's just over two hours basically. Yeah, so I I think yeah, it's. It, it's a fine watch. It is a fine is watch. Is there actually anything in spoilers we want to discuss? Because I think we've potentially either alluded to enough or covered mm. enough. Well, actually, I mean, yeah, okay, I don't think we need to necessarily go into spoilers, but basically, at the beginning of the series, you see that shot that's reminiscent of Carrie where she's emerging covered in blood. Oh, that, yes. That is the result of a particularly gory scene, which it builds up to in, it towards the final episode. Um, and. I, th- I thought the effect was, was quite good. It, it actually shocked me quite a fair bit. I didn't really know. You don't know exactly how it's going to go down, but it, it went down in quite a, if, a impactful yes. way, I thought. Yes, I did, definitely didn't see it coming. No. But there's just something about that as an action, possibly because it's been done as like a visual metaphor in comedy shows too much. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's pretty, pretty uh, gruesome in that context. And it is kind of it's kind of good as a uh, narrative mechanism that you're always working back to the first scene of the first episode. Yeah, a uh, good soundtrack as well. I thought. Yes. Quite good picks. Um, they all they all make sense as part of the narrative, which again I think is another thing that's plucked through. Um, I don't know, I think James Gunn probably kick started a bit of that in modern TV and film as well. Is is that sort of yeah. 
and I guess Edgar Wright did it with Baby Driver as well in that they kind of use the songs as a as a character in the show to to move on certain plot points and stuff. Um, but I think it worked quite effectively in this. Hmm. Um, I again, I I it worked effectively, but it still felt to me like it was just. It didn't feel to me like this was a conscious choice of the show. It just felt like it was copying what was popular for yeah. shows to do. Yeah. And again, maybe that is because since since Guardians of the Galaxy, so many have done it. Mm. That it's even... And the thing is, it's not even like it was an original thing when Guardians of the Galaxy did it. No. But it's still like... Specifically that era of music. Mm. Okay, so I... I... I would say overall what we're saying is it's not particularly the most original of content but you know what it's it's a pretty good um, mesh of some of those things that have become popular and as we've said they're, it's like just a two hour series so I mean you might as well yeah and at the end of the day uh, these 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 concepts become popular for a reason yeah I would say um, I put it on par with good omens probably yeah I'd say both are worth a watch I didn't like I, I wasn't, I'm not sat here like gushing like we were for the Mandalorian last week but no. <laughs> like I also didn't walk away thinking oh that was a waste of time yeah why did Nick make me watch that <laughs> well it's one of your picks next week we'll, we'll, we'll see well it was a recent release I haven't seen it either so we will <laughs> see <laughs> 